UFC 298, who's the biggest star? Now, if I'm to say that, whose stock went up the most? Who do you want to see the most? Whose return match are you most interested in? If they all came out at headlines today, which one goes to the top of the page, right? I want you to think about that because I'm feeling you're going to say Elia Deport for very good reason. You might say Marab. Tishlevili becomes a number one contender for very good reason. Ian Gary looks like he pushed through something very meaningful. Who do you got? Take a minute, because you want to know who the biggest star? You want to know who the hottest doc is? Max Holloway wasn't even there. Disagree with me? Give it a shot. Do you disagree with me? The one guy who is in demand more than anybody else is Max Holloway, the guy that they were done with. Max Holloway goes on in his career to be the greatest featherweight ever. Jose Aldo even stood back and said, hey, Max is the greatest. And all of a sudden, this rugby player from New Zealand named Volkanovski emerges. They have a very close fight. I happened to see it live. I thought Max won. They gave it to Volk, gave him the belt. They rematched it. Now, the rematch, and I'm not super bullish that Max won the first fight. I thought he won. The second fight, I can very clearly tell you, Max won three rounds to two, no question. They gave it to Volkanovski. So now they go out and they fight for a third time, and it's a gap. I mean, Volkanovski has outran everything. What do you do with Max? Max is so good and Max is so dominant that Ilya Teporia, his undefeated record, his number one contendership, came about a way that nobody else that got to Volks did, which is, you know what? Staying away from Max. Ilya Teporia is the only person of the modern era to find his way into a championship fight against Volkanovski that didn't have to go through Max because they realized nobody can get through Max. We've got Volk, we got Max, we got a gap, we got the rest of the field. Who's the best of the rest? Now, the reason I say that, he hasn't done anything different, right? A, a massive part of success in life, and you will find this, but when you have competition all around, you're having a hard time with them, one of the massive signs of success is to outlast them. Whether you starve them out or you're more disciplined, if you can stay in something longer, the people that can beat you, the people that are better than you, if two years from now, they've given up, they've stopped, they've moved on, maybe they reached their goals, whatever the point is that they got out of the competition, it's a great way to beat them. When I look at Max Holloway, like I don't know for sure what Ilya Tapuri is gonna go from here. He's being called out by Sean O'Malley, that can't hurt. Ilya Tapuri has now represented a whole country. Dana White is saying we were planning to go to Spain, now we're gonna get to Spain even faster. Like there's massively exciting things for Teporia, but who is next is not a question that I can answer. I give a real good look at Yuri Rodriguez and the fact that he's going to fight with Brian Ortega. That seems like a massive fight to me. Two top-ranked guys, one that you could look at for a number one contendership. You then look at Volkanovski. Volkanovski is, of course, the number one contender for the championship that he owned a night ago. But I don't predict for you that Volkanovski at 35 years old is going to get the rematch. I don't predict for you that Brian Ortega or your Rodriguez is going to get a title fight if they don't ask for it, and neither one of them appears to be the kind of guys that are going to go and ask for it. So as great as Tapori did, I don't exactly know what you do with them. The hardest question you could ask me out of 298 is what's next for Volk? That's a very difficult question to answer. It's very difficult to know what that plan is or what that path is how you reconcile that with the goals and vision that Volk has versus what the matchmakers might come and suggest. But one guy that is discussed in every conversation all of a sudden is the one guy that wasn't even there, Max Holloway. All of a sudden, Max Holloway, who looked like a stepping stone and or the next best thing, is currently signed to a title fight on the biggest card in promotion history, 300 opposite Gaethje, which is the people's main event. So what happens if Max wins? Because that discussion's already floating around out there. Does Max become number one contender? And it's Max that goes on to fight Islam? Do we revive what Chael would like to see happen? We revive and actually make a division called the BMF, and Max goes and runs in a separate campaign. This is with a win over Gaethje. Or do we do what Max says he's going to do, which is to defeat Gaethje, become the BMF, leave the division, go back to 45, and take on whoever is currently king, which for now 
is iliotoporia. Do you have any idea or do you have any suggestion better than Max with a win? Okay, we're going to 300. We're going to all the spotlight. We're going to the people's main event of what we believe is going to be the most publicized and viewed mixed martial arts event of all time. We believe that. So now let's take and put the focus on Max and say that he wins. Do you have any suggestion more powerful for a title defense against Taporia, particularly if we in fact do go to Spain, than Max Holloway? Do you have any suggestion? Would you rather see a rematch with Volkanovski? I won't tell you you're wrong. I'm, I'm open to hearing. Would you rather see Ortega? Would you rather see Yuri Rodriguez? I want to say we got a Nurmagomedov floating around that division. Do you have a different name that you'd like to see? It just appears to me that the real winner of the day in terms of whose stock is going up the most and whose potential to rise, coming out of 298, I felt like it was Max Holloway. I mean, it was a short period of time ago. Guys like me that are fans of Max are saying, hey, man, you're moving up to 155. Let's plan on staying at 155. You're a champion, your championship quality, and we're not going to be able to get back there at 145. I mean, this was a very meaningful conversation that Max going up to challenge Gaethje, BMF or not, looked like a step in the right direction, but Max himself is saying, no, 55-pound belt isn't the one I care about. In all fairness, the BMF isn't the one that I put my head on my pillow at night and dream about. The one that I want is mine, and it's at 45. Well, all of a sudden, that path is very different, isn't it? And what an interesting match you would have between Max Holloway, who does a significant amount of his damage on his feet as a pugilist. I would go as far as to tell you that Ilya Tapori is the best boxer in the UFC. I know that's a moniker that we kind of go around and we move and we assign to people. But if you look like the defense and the offense of Taporia, purely with his hands, just left and right hand, I don't know that I've seen anything quite as crisp. I don't know if I've seen any defense with shoulder rolls, with slipping in and out, with being able to avoid punches, not to mention countering and coming back. As anyone. So now you just have the matchup. Just the matchup in itself seems like something that we would need to see. And I don't know where we're going to go with Taporia. I don't know where we're going to go with Volkanovski. But I do know the one guy that keeps getting looked at, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about Islam, or you're talking about Gaethje for a BMF, or you're talking about coming back to 45, all of a sudden it's Max Holloway. All of a sudden the guy that found a way to outlast, he found a way to survive. He found a way to stay motivated and never give up and keep his eye on the ball. All of a sudden Max Holloway is in higher demand. And if I was to tell you out of 298 who the great big winner is, between a new champion, a new number one contender, what Ian Gary did. If I was to tell you the big winner of UFC 298, I'll tell you it's Max Holloway.